G'day everyone, this is part 2 of Remember Super Bowl 38. This game had everything. Drama on the field, clutch plays, heart in mouth moments, and of course, I would be remiss if I didn't mention some of the drama off the field. We had streakers, and the halftime performance that was so controversial. We got to see Janet Jackson's breasts. Looking back, I didn't think it was much of a big deal, but I guess in 2004, and with kids watching, I can see why it would be frowned upon. What do you guys think? Actually, I'd be interested to know what you actually thought when you saw it in 2004. Did you think it was offensive back then? I think if it happened in Australia, most Australians would just laugh and not give it much thought. But I'd be interested to know what everyone else thought. Other news, CBS apologized for the ending of its Super Bowl halftime show when singer Justin Timberlake tore off part of Janet Jackson's top, exposing her breast. CBS spokeswoman said, quote, CBS deeply regrets the incident. We would like to apologize to anyone who was offended, said NFL Executive Vice President Joe Brown. We are extremely disappointed. My decision to uh, change the Super Bowl performance was actually made after the final rehearsal. MTV, CBS, the NFL had no knowledge of this whatsoever. And unfortunately, the whole thing went wrong in the end. I am really sorry if I offended anyone. That was truly not my intention. Now this happens quite a lot in Australia. Streakers running onto the field, I would imagine this happens everywhere else in the world as well. Look at Teddy Bruschi here. Look how intense he looks. That's actually creeping me out. You can hear our Danish friends commentating in the background. They're having a good chuckle, I would imagine. That streaker is lucky Matt Chatham only gave him a love tap. Matt's barely touched him and he's gone flying. I don't mind the occasional streaker as long as it doesn't interfere with the game. I think this was before the kickoff, so it was okay. Det var ikke imponerende for os, der gik ind igennem. Vi fik dog nok tjekket vores tasker. Amerikanerne har insisteret på, at det her er det sikreste sted i verden. I dag, der stod en nøgen mand midt på banen i mange sekunder. Ingen anede, hvor han kom fra. Hvordan kunne det ske? Der er meget, meget strenge restriktioner for folk, der skal ind på banen. Vi var nede på sidelinjen inden kampen og blev tjekket. Let's look at some of the best moments of the Pats' journey that season, leading up to Super Bowl 38. The Super Bowl Patriots, a 15-game winning streak. Only the undefeated Dolphins of 1972, 17-0, had a longer streak in the history of the NFL. When you win that many games, you know, not all of them are blowouts. And in the Patriots' case, very few were. You remember some crucial games down the stretch. Like, how about the Monday night game in Denver? How good a game was that? And how brilliant was this strategy move? The Patriots, down by one, call for the intentional safety. They figured they would never get in good field position. And Lonnie Paxton is so good that he actually hit the upright with the snap. So they punch down three. They hold, get better field position. And wouldn't you know, Tom Brady to give it. Touchdown with 30 seconds to go. Belichick's gamble, brilliant. They win 30-26. They disposed of Miami. The Patriots never win in the heat of Miami. But in October, Richard Seymour blocked a field goal by Olindo Mare in regulation that would have won it. Then Amare missed, and then later in overtime, Tom Brady to Troy Brown and his fan renowned. He could go all the way. 82 yards, 19-13. The Patriots win in Miami. And then the return in the snow. Week 14 in New England, Teddy Ice Cold Brewski with the interception, the touchdown, and the confetti celebration. 12-0, the pass. How about week 13 at Indianapolis? After the Colts pulled it within seven, just seconds left in the first half, Temple Bendel Johnson, 92 
two yards. He's going to go and give the Patriots a two touchdown cushion, which they would need. He does so all the way. The Colts come roaring back. And then the goal line stand, which meant the championship game would be played in New England, not Indianapolis. Edron James on first and second down. Bruski at tackle on first down. Who with the coverage on third down and then? Ted Washington low. Willie McGinnis and company high. And the Patriots had stopped the Colts on the one yard line. They went 38-34. And so the championship game was held in Foxborough, not Indy. And they fought the law, and the law won. Number 24, Ty Law won once. He won twice. And against Peyton Manning, the veteran, Ty Law, the veteran of three Super Bowls in eight years, along with McGinnis, makes his third pick. The Patriots are going to the Super Bowl winning 24-14. The owner, Robert Grant, says we got one to go. Two years ago, the Patriots stunned the football world. Two touchdown underdogs as they beat the Rams for Bill Belichick 2017. Now his favorites. They didn't stun anybody by winning their 15th straight. Here's Brady on play action, throwing, touchdown! On play action, Brady takes his throw, touchdown! Here's Brady to throw, he throws in, down, touchdown! Kick by the Terry is up, and it is good! It is good! This was the first time in Super Bowl history that both quarterbacks threw for 300 yards and three touchdown passes. This com six combined TD passes, the third most in a Super Bowl. Charles, there were a lot of myths dispelled today. We thought Carolina can only move the ball with the run. Jake DeLome threw the ball all over the place. We thought New England would come in and throw the ball short and threw long, and they rushed the ball real well for over 100 yards. So, New England, congratulations for dispelling all those myths. I'll tell you what's not a myth is that you got a quarterback who is Montana-like with the way he wins games. you got a defense that's in the right position and does all those things they're supposed to, and the best head coach Two assistant coaches, best overall coaching staff, resides in Boston. That's the New England Patriots, guys. And Tom Brady is still dreaming. I think Tom Brady's kind of hot. Uh, he's hot. <laughs> he's you know, hotter after this. <laughs> you know, the Patriots still have not lost a football game since September 28th, the last day of baseball's regular season. And of course, this video would not be complete without hearing what Robert Kraft, Bill Belichick, and Tom Brady said after winning their second Super Bowl. For Phil Simms and Armin Katayan and Bonnie Bernstein, Greg Gumbel saying so long from now from the Super Bowl 38 in Houston. The Patriots are winners. Stay tuned. The Cadillac Post Game Show coming up next after this. All right. Hello, Houston. What a week. You did a fantastic job. And you have just witnessed what I believe is the greatest Super Bowl game in history. The New England Patriots are the Super Bowl champions. And I'm here with Commissioner Paul Tagliabu for the presentation of the Vince Lombardi Trophy. Today, two classy organizations, the New England Patriots and the Carolina Panthers, thrilled America with a tremendous Super Bowl game. To Bob Kraft, to you and your family, to Coach Belichick and all of your players, congratulations on your second Super Bowl victory in three years. 15 wins in a row. It's hard to top that. Here's the Vince Lombardi Trophy number two. <laughs> wow. Fans of New England, we waited 42 years for our first championship. We waited two years for the second. The 17 players, 53 players, 17 coaches and the head coach, the heart and soul of our team, showed us what the concept of teamwork is about. And then when that's combined with perseverance and commitment, great things happen. Lead high injuries were overcome. And we won 15 games in a row. because of the concept of team. In, a, in, in today's era, people celebrate individuals and individual accomplishments. But my family and I are proud of this man, Coach Belichick, who instilled the values of power of team. And because of that today, we, are, we have seen a true team and a true 
champion. Congrats, congratulations, Mr. Kraft. Why don't you hand that trophy over there to Coach Belichick? Bill, how did your team do this today? Tell me about that last drive. Well, you know, it was a great, it was a great team effort again. You know, we've done it 15 weeks in a row, and I'm, I'm really fortunate. I have a great owner, and I've got a lot of great players, and they made a lot of great plays today. Uh, you know, this team's met all comers this year, 15 straight, and there have been some heart attacks, but they've come out on top. They deserve all the credit in the world. These guys are champions. You're an unbelievable coach. Congratulations, another Super Bowl title for Bill Belichick. And Mr. Kraft, we have over here the Super Bowl MVP. Once again, it's Tom Brady. I uh, think you can look right over there, Tom. I know this never gets old. You win a choice of Cadillacs. The Cadillac XLR Roadster is here. I'd call it a breakthrough performance like Cadillac calls it, but you've done this before. Tell me about this, this courageous effort today by the Patriots. Well, I, I think you give a lot of credit to Carolina. That's, that's the toughest team as we played all season. And um, the heart of the guys you see in front of me here, the heart of the coaching staff and the organization, I'm just so proud to be the quarterback. And none of it would be possible without these guys and all the fans we got back in Boston. Careful on that city. Don't tear that thing down tonight. We'll be back tomorrow. We want to see you out there Tuesday for the parade, all right? Hey. We're up here, baby. Hey, some precious metal for you, your keys. You'll get the Roselle Trophy tomorrow. I don't know, instead of going to one of America's favorite uh, amusement parks, you're also going instead to Pebble Beach this week. Yeah, well, I look forward to get there. So I will pass this thing on. Bring it on over here. Bring it over here. Look, you've been in football a long time, Bill. Were these two completely different games or, or seemingly till the end of the, of the I mean, how much... There's no way you thought this could be a 32-29 game when you're three minutes left in the first half like that. Yeah, probably not. Uh, I, I thought it would be a close game. I thought it could easily come down to the last possession, last kick, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, because of the way I thought it was a very even matchup. But uh, probably wouldn't pick the score quite that high. You know, in the end, nobody could stop anybody. What is it about a team that can win 15 in a row? First of all, if you're going to win 15 in a row, you know that they aren't going to say, okay, here, congratulations. You know you're going to have to sweat this out. But, but what is it? And now that you can think about what, what was in the bottle. Well, I think it's just the whole team. There were so many different people that contributed. Just look at today, all the receivers, or the backs, the offensive line did an awesome job. Uh, you know, you got guys stepping in. Russ Hochstein, a couple of weeks ago, wasn't even playing. Uh, the depth of the roster that, that Scott Pioli and the personnel department created, the guys coming back from injuries that the, the trainers and the, and the weight coaches and the strength and all those people did. It just, there's so many people involved. And, you know, Chris, some of those plays that we, we had on that final drive were plays that go all the way back to minicamp. Mm -hmm. And you get into a situation and you call them and you execute them here in, a, in the Super Bowl and they end up helping you win. And so it's uh, you just never know when it's going to be that way. But we had some of those today. And I think that's kind of been the way it's been all year. Look, this is the obvious. You can't say enough about Tom Brady. I mean, no. it seems like the more the heat gets on, the, the cooler he is. <laughs> Well, we, we talked all week about trying to make sure that if the game was on the line, that we'd put the ball in his hands. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of confidence in, in his decision-making, his, his uh, ability to read defenses, manage the game, you know, his accuracy. He, he did a tremendous job, like he's done so many times for us this year. And uh, well, he plays with a lot of confidence, and I think our team plays with a lot of confidence uh, when he's in there. Has the game unfurled and it, and it changed dramatically? What, what surprised you the most, both, both maybe good and bad? Well, I think that, that both teams are, are good defensive teams. Teams, but it, it looked like that that we both ran out of gas a little bit mm -hmm. and and just uh, didn't play as well earlier in the game uh, and later in the game as, as what the two teams did earlier. We had some great field position early and and Carolina kept us out and, and we were able to keep them from moving the ball. But the longer the game went, uh, the more the offenses seemed to really you know gain control. A game like this, like two years ago, when does it sink in what you guys have done? Uh, I don't know, not quite yet. I, I think we're still you know really enjoying the moment. It's it's been a special year. Um, you know, anytime you win 50 in a row, I mean it's just uh, unprecedented for me. It's it's a, it's an awesome feeling. But uh, to culminate it this way, we're, we're on such a high, I don't think we're going to have to get on the plane to go back to Boston. No, we'll I just, don't. We'll just float along. I don't think so. The red light special. Congratulations. Thanks, Thanks Chris. Champs two times in three years in this day and age, unheard of. Bill Belichick wearing the crown again. Back to you. Thank you for taking the journey down memory lane with me. I hope you enjoyed reminiscing Super Bowl 38. I definitely did. 
Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Cheers.